First question from. Go ahead. I, I'm I'm not gonna try to say that let's name. Let's go from, with go. Go. We're gonna go to go. We're gonna go with go. Best thing to do in the first 24 to 48 hours home with a puppy. What do you think? Ooh, I like that. I know this is a good one. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is one. I'll let you go first so I can poke holes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let the dog get comfortable just being in the home and kind of I want to I want them to engage in moving around in the home obviously in a controlled setting but also wait wait yeah what do you mean about engaged in the home so I'm gonna put a leash on and I'm gonna walk <laughs> that puppy around the home just so they can get an idea of all the things in the home obviously I'm gonna have already puppy grouped in the home so you want to do that before you even get the puppy so you're bringing them into a safe environment that they're not gonna be chewing cords they're not gonna be doing this they're not gonna be doing that and then also make sure that after that you give them some time in a crate most puppies are overstimulated the minute they come into a house so give them something they can do and then also give them a spot that they can relax and chill without having the expectation of them roaming around the home and exploring on their own now poke let, the holes poke the holes let me ask here. let me ask you a question i need i need sparky to clarify something for me do you mean just to show them around like the main room that they might be spending time in or the whole home probably just the main room i don't really i don't really feel a need for them to go into every single bedroom because puppy short attention span is like 1.34 seconds or even the living room yeah. like it could just be the kitchen area where he's gonna eat and drink and maybe have a playpen they don't need to be wandering all over the place. And I knew that's what Sparky meant. I'm just picking Poking on him. Those holes. Because Poking it did those sound holes. like the, the home. Like, here's your home, puppy. So. I was going to give you that question. You blindsided me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, um, yes, the, the uh, introduction just into the puppy space. But not off-leash and running rampant and going whatever they want. You know, go ahead and put them on a harness or a leash. Now, here's the thing, though, I would say is, um, and, and Sparky and I have talked about this before on, on other lives, but it's like, what type of puppy are you getting? Because sometimes you might get an eight-week-old puppy that is just in drive, excited, and jumping all over you, and eager to work for food within the first couple of hours. You better go ahead and start setting boundaries for that puppy, working with that puppy a little bit, and then showing that puppy where it should rest, which is in, in his crate. Mm -hmm. Now, if you get it. And then that puppy would definitely be on a harness, on a leash, even in the house when showing, you know, the main area the puppy might be spending some time in. But then if you Let me get... pause you really quick. What commands would you work on? Oh. You said commands. Give her, give them oh. an easy one. Okay. Really easy so, one. So it's the come command, but that's too simple. I like relationship exercises. The first few days my puppy comes uh, into, into the home. So what I mean by that is handful of kibble or whatever kind of food you're feeding and a uh, puppy's name, so Birdie. We have a puppy right now named Birdie. Birdie, and then just a hand motion moving back to draw the puppy into you. And walking around the kitchen area or whatever kind of area the puppy might be spending time in, just walking around, Birdie, another handful of food, Birdie. And then you can add come if the puppy's really good to it. Doing, um, call that a relationship game, five minutes with an eight week old puppy. Targeting place and then crate are two things you can also go ahead and start doing. Don't work too much on stationary or anything like that. Get your puppy to move with you and then target place and go and crate. Those are things you can do right away with a really driven puppy. And then the other thing I wanted to say is, um, really unsure puppy like he said just let your puppy settle in if you get a tired little lump of fluff don't cuddle it all day and don't ask anything of the puppy just put him in crate let, let him, him rest exist. yeah let him yeah. rest and this might be the type of puppy what do you think so if i get a really calm little bit unsure puppy instead of leashing them up what about a playpen and being in the playpen with the puppy no leash and actually encouraging them to move around the pen would you say that's appropriate for that temperament? I like that, but also I like the food idea too, though. If this puppy takes if food. If it will take food, it may I may not. not be doing the puppy's name and then moving backwards. I may just literally sit there and be like, puppy's name. They kind of even acknowledge me with half an eye. I'm like, boop, yeah, little piece exactly. of food. So you're still building up that relationship. I call it name recognition because you're teaching them name give eye contact or name just give some kind of recognition to the name mm -hmm. and then eventually maybe you have that motivated pup or you have an older pup switch it up fast yeah and they're doing what Bethany's saying which is name walk backwards eventually add in your come one clarif clarification I want to make too is the place mm -hmm. that's the dog bed oh yeah dog oh, bed oh, towel on the ground pet cot we like pet cots here at puppy cat because they're mm -hmm. elevated slightly and for a new puppy you can take the legs off and just let it be flat and then build it up by putting the legs in so it's elevated it's a really easy way of teaching place
and stay. It's an easy, like eventually in a few weeks, it's a good way to teach stay. But um, I mean, just honestly, long story short, it depends on your puppy. And I think one of the biggest problems we have, not with owners necessarily, but even in the dog training world, is pigeonholing these dogs or puppies. Part of our job, we don't just work at Puppy Academy. We're both behaviorists. And part of our job is to look at a dog or puppy and then teach the puppy based off their temperament and then what their parent's lifestyle is, their owner's lifestyle is. So you really have to look at um, the puppy's personality in that moment. What is it they need from you? Not what you need to teach it or what your trainer said to teach the puppy or what Google said to teach your puppy in the first week. Maybe you have a sensitive puppy that just needs to follow you around for several days sure. and build food drive. Maybe you have a wild puppy that honestly needs to learn no in the first 24 hours. Just really try to keep an open mind and adjust to whatever temperament you have in front of you. So. We see a lot of different temperaments. We, yeah. we have that dog that for the first three days is literally laying on the ground, saying their name, giving them a treat, and then maybe moving back a few inches. And then three days later, we have them jumping through hoops, doing all the crazy things, digging, biting, nipping. So it's a level of comfort. It, take, it takes anywhere between three to five days for the average pup to get settled into a home. So you may have that sweet ball of fluff that she was mentioning. That, that you held for 24 mm -hmm. hours. <laughs> and then three days you're like, what happened? Tasmanian <laughs> devil rampaging your house. Yeah. It's because they get comfortable. And the puppy you have bringing home right away isn't probably gonna be the puppy you have in a week yeah. so follow what Bethany said if the anything you take from us from today's session is just don't coddle the puppy mm -hmm. in the very first three days and let adapt. them be a dog and adapt yes adapt. absolutely okay cool we have a tiktok question tiktok okay. question yay sure. puppies go to school here I, I, okay so usually we would have in a day we do anywhere between like 20 to 30 puppies so i don't i couldn't give you the exact amount for the whole thing but i feel like i should know that uh, for the daily you should <laughs> I don't know how many dogs we have on our whole roster total we have do we do have quite a few of them but daily we have between 28 to 30 okay a lot of puppies all right let's go down to um you want to do this one and get it out of the way because it makes us sad oh man are you gonna give me that one too? Yes, You're you so should. Cool. Sparky, right. what is your what is your opinion? Oh, on this all right. It's Elsie, right? Elsie, yeah. Well, I'm gonna tie it into our previous question. So, how do I get my puppy to stop peeing when she gets excited? So, okay. Um, I have follow ups. Obviously, we don't have Elsie here. Maybe we do. Maybe she'll be able to answer. But is it towards people for excitement? They're giving their attention, Let's or is it just moving around? They're happy and they because they're playing Let, let's assume because this is what we see you're, most you're often give me the hard one huh well, right. well let's assume that the puppy wiggles up to you and you bend down and touch it and you get a puddle that's the most common i think it is it is i want you to oh, what man, are you ready for it <laughs> are you gonna be dramatic i want you to ignore the puppy <gasps> we said ignore the puppy yes puppy what happens is if they get attention dogs have a threshold of stimulation they can handle before either they get too excited and pee threshold is usually the energy level that they cap at before something else happens jumping barking nipping or peeing you want to you want to have that threshold always below yeah. so if i give love into the situation that threshold goes up and they let the bladder loose they let it free we always say um you know you 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 get what you pet we didn't come up oh, with that you pet what you get you get pet what, what you, you no you I get like, what you pet no, i like pet what you get no you get what you that doesn't even make sense you it makes pet sense to me. what you get you say what you pet is what you get yeah that's it what you pet you is what even, you get you don't even know that's, that's a good one he doesn't, good one. He doesn't okay. even know he doesn't that's even know. ricky reminds us thanks ricky then that's not what you say that's what ricky said anyway um, when you have a puppy that's super sweet and it makes you want to pet the puppy, it's submissive, it probably kind of stays low and it's so cute and you want to reward that. But the problem is it's the same thing as we're accidentally rewarding a puppy for coming over and jumping up on you and you're petting the puppy. It's stimulation. Petting no, no, stim stay down, stay down, stay down. Yeah, petting is stimulation. Mm -hmm. And so what you're dealing with, Elsie, with your puppy, is instead of jumping, you know, the stimulation is she's letting her bladder go. And uh, Sparky can probably attest to this too. We've had several clients where the puppy might do that once or twice with us, and then it doesn't really do it that much anymore unless it has a full bladder, but we'll continue to do it with the owners. 
And I would, I know this is hard, but I would really encourage you to try to never reward her running up to you and being at your feet and doing this this wiggle just be like nope puppy come sit and use a lot of food walk around your house with a food pouch to bring her up and build confidence in an upward motion even we don't do this a ton but even do some um, food luring you know up to the eye try to encourage her to bring her chin up and and that can help and never rewarding that low wiggle always try to bring her up and reward with food and only do pets when she's calm now when it comes to other people coming in your house that's tough make sure she has a chance to empty her bladder twice before you have company maybe even have her meet them outside um and that's some of the tweaks that you're gonna you're gonna have to make i think do you have anything to add to that story time story time yay so we had a client about a year ago and this puppy was very excited very cute as they all are and he would pee if you look at him wrong oh, you give him that like <gasps> and so he hard. Tar, letting the floodgate loose and the owner asked me for months he goes how do we stop this I said, Man, come on we, we've talked about this you got to stop giving the affection go two weeks at the wrong time yes stop at the wrong time. Affection at the wrong time go two weeks that whenever he gets overexcited and runs up to you like bethany was just saying ignore him Try your best. I know it's hard. He's cute. And he goes, okay, I, I've done it. And he doesn't pee with me anymore. But now if a person outside looks at him wrong, same thing. I said, all right, this is hard because you may be called the a-hole once or twice. But when you're outside and someone wants to pet your puppy, I'm so sorry. We're working. We're training. Maybe next time. And you walk by. And next time is not next time because that person's probably too energetic for him anyways. Yeah. And eventually this puppy was able to calm down and relax. And now... A year later, I actually saw him on the green belt for us in Hermosa. That's like our little like main walking thoroughfare. And I was able to walk up, ask him for a sit, give him a couple pats on the head, no pee, and then go about my way and no accidents. So it does take quite a long time, but it's a mentality switch over. It's like a training mentality you have to put yourself into. And this guy did that. And now he has a dog that can be pet by pretty much anyone in a controlled way. And that's the end of my story. <laughs> I thought it was a great story. That is a good story. And I've got, you know, a couple of ones really similar to that. And so just keep that in mind. There is hope for that puppy, but it is it is a bit tough. <laughs> we have a video request from Marco Polo. And Polo. the question is, they're starting school in June, so anything we can do to prepare? So let oh, me yeah, oh, definitely. Let's do it. If we're going to assume that you're coming here, some of the things that you can do to prepare is, um, Sparky, go. <laughs> I'm tired. I Check love this. Play. So one, yes. Thank you, Ricky. Ricky, check out our client portal. There's a ton of great information on that. And one, start getting your dog used to the crate. Even if it's just mm -hmm. 30 oh, minutes yeah. every few hours, just get him used to that. Going in and out. Yep. Just crate, walk in, crate, food, food break. let him come out. Oh, by the way, so you ever hear us refer to house. house? House and break is what Puppy Academy uses. Do you want to go? Sorry, I was just, I was helping. I was supporting you. Go. Oh, Sparky, go. House is crate, crate is house. Anytime that you're joining our program, one of the first things we're going to tell you on day one is teach some easy things, kind of what we've already gone over. Name, moving back, name, come. That's one of the first things we do on the first day just to build up relationship. Uh, going in and out of the crate for food, build up consistency and a level of comfort of being in that crate. Thank you. Thank you, Bethany. Thresholds as well. Thresholds are really, really great. Walking up to a door, having them maybe sit if you can even get that or even just standing food, in front of the door heavy food board. giving them a treat opening it closing it treat and then eventually walking <clears throat> out of it to go potty just simple things like that ricky still we're trying to get uh get marco on hey! Hey, marco! Sorry, sorry. did it work can okay. we hear him how do we hear him can you guys hear me yeah okay good good i can hear you guys you can hear okay, me cool. So yes, we are starting in June 10th. Uh, we have our orientation. We do have the crate. Just one question. We do have the crate in the bedroom right now. Uh, and he's been sleeping with us really well. He just cries at the beginning and then he sleeps through the night. Keep the crate in the bedroom right now or push it out. I have no problems with that. Different trainers have different views. Some trainers want it completely out, cold turkey, teach the dog how to be totally independent. I like the dog with me at night. Um, but during the day, 
definitely make sure like with quarantine and everything, a lot of people are working from their bedrooms. I would try to make sure that during the day, the dog is getting a little bit of solo time, even if it's a few 20 minute intervals when you're not in there to really see how the puppy is going to do alone. Is the, is the bedroom your main like work area throughout the day or are you guys in a different room throughout the day? So we're, we're both working at, at the office. So at okay. night, he, yeah, yeah, at night he's in the crate. During the day, we'll give him some sun time. He's at a, he's one at a, at a, at a babysitter with Shuri. I think you know her. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, Shuri. There we go. So she looks after him during the day. Um, and then she's working on some of that stuff too. And then yeah, Jimmy Shari can... does great work at home. So what she does is she actually has crate sessions throughout the day. Usually all of her dogs get about a two hour interval or one hour interval depending on their age. So yeah, you guys are in a good spot there. When you guys do start having the puppy at home with you guys, if there's ever like a day off that you have, if the crate is in the bedroom and your main living area is your living room apart from the bedroom, that's a perfect place for the daytime. Because when you're in the living room, the puppy's in the crate for a few intervals throughout that daytime session. At night, right. Bethany said, no issues. We love that. Yeah, you're, you're way ahead of the curve. I would mean, go ahead and really focus on what we consider the relationship building exercise, which is using morning or evening food whenever you can. Like you're using their dinner or breakfast to work with them for, you know, three to six minutes, however much stamina they have. Just handfuls of food, walking around, applying the dog's name, and that way you get that really, really nice uh, focus and follower mode um, in the dog. So that way when we later on, the, the training sessions, it's so easy to keep their focus because you've done prep work. Got it. Okay. Looking forward to seeing you guys in June. Thank you. Of Us course, too. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Us too. Thank you so much. Thanks, Marco. Thanks for your patience. Likewise. Thank you, guys. It worked. Thank you, everybody, for hanging in there. Um, Just one second. We're reconnecting our mics. For the... Uh, Nickel difficulty, but we finally got them on. That's awesome. That's fun. I like oh, that. So really like being able to see see people. Okay. Before you get into that question, TikTok wants to know where Buddy and Max are, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> were they in their program or were they in general? They were specific. Okay. <laughs> so Buddy and Max, they have graduated our program. They will uh, be starting CGC training with me, which is all the way up to service animal in the next couple months. And uh, right now, they're probably hanging out on their front porch, which is right on the Hermosa Strand, watching all the people go by. If you guys ever want to visit them, take a, take a walk on the Strand around 5 p.m. And uh, <laughs> he tells me that- I, I'm not sure that He that's... tells me that they have at least 50 people a night come by and just hang out with them and give them some pets. They'll be waiting on the wall for you. <laughs> there you go, people. There you go. Okay. Um, tofu says you two are funny and entertaining. <laughs> Don't you remember Tofu? We appreciate it. <gasps> oh, Tofu! It's Lexi! Hi, Tofu! Thank you, Lexi. We thank appreciate you. you. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Someone asked us if we were a couple a few weeks, a few sessions ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Kimberly was loving that. <laughs> it's, more, it's more like a very annoying brother relationship. Yeah. More like that. I call her my work wife. Work or work. Actually, I said that. Yeah, we, I don't, I don't no, think we, I'm allowed we, to say we that. We established you're not allowed to say that. I can say work husband. I still her, understand yeah, why. But it's, I, it's okay. Can really teach you new PC. We, we, need to, we need to move on. Yeah, move okay. on. This is a big one. Um, this is a really big one. We could talk about this for an hour, but we have six minutes. So <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, having a problem with Primo, six month golden retriever. So the first thing I notice, so this is why this is important, six month old golden retriever, adolescent, not puppy puppy. So this advice is gonna be different for any of you out there with a puppy under six months old. Please keep that in mind. Okay, not listening to orders like sit, come, no, simple things like that. He, no is not a simple thing. Um, just to kind of cut yourself some slack, it's not a simple thing, especially for an adolescent. Six months of condition. Yeah. He likes eating everything that he sees, and I know that's important because when we walk outside, he'd eat whatever's in front of him. What can you recommend? I would start working with a, a trainer that uses um, training tools, or and that could be a martingale, a slip leash. It doesn't even have to be some of the harsher training tools, but find a trainer that is gonna teach you how to control his head. We use everything but between the two of us. We've got experience with I mean, every training tool I can think of anyway. Mm -hmm. So that would be my first recommendation. And you want to, you just need control of his head. That's so important. There's no amount of food in the world that's going to trump the, you know, bird poo that could potentially be better than your treat out in front of you. 
Um, just you to kind of bird poop. <laughs> I don't know why I used bird poop, but I don't, I don't either. Do you have dogs that like bird poop? Yes, is absolutely. That, that is totally right. a thing. Our dogs like to eat poop. That's that's Whatever. kind of our thing. Anyway. Not not our dogs, but like the dogs. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in for this one too. Um, not listening to orders like sit, come, and no. The no, that one's a challenge, just like Bethany said. But the sit and the come, a lot of the time, if you want to throw in a, a decent no, use body language with it too. Mm -hmm. So saying no and just simply stepping in your dog. One more time, Bethany, what was that? Oh, yeah. So that's that's an easy way to do a no. It's called a body block. It's spatial pressure. It basically means you're using your body to kind of back your dog away. Very easy way of teaching them to Take a step back, and in that moment of them stepping back, you have a couple seconds to be like, sit with a piece of food. They back off and sit. Good treat. You have to make it a connect. You have to make a connection quickly to what your dog is doing. Short attention span is like 1.34 seconds, or some crazy thing like that for a young puppy. For an adult dog, it's only 2.34 seconds. You don't have much time to respond to it. How do you know how specific that is? is that I, read, like I read a study on it. Yeah, it actually he, is a thing. He read a study. Check out the thing that UCLA is actually really interesting. But whenever you do that, you have to give a quick response. If you don't get a quick response from your dog and you give a command fast and reward it quickly, they're gone. They've already forgot that you've even done the body block. So Can I jump on top of that? Please. So um, when you ask for a command and your dog doesn't do it, we even do this with puppies, uh, don't say it again. If I say sit Ooh. and I don't get it from my dog, I need to reinforce it in some way. That could be food lure with puppy puppies. It could be leash. It could be body language. It could be food and body language, food and leash. And I don't say it again um, until their little rear end hits the ground. And if I think they know the command, I won't even repeat it a second time because there's no reason. I'm not teaching sit. So I say it and I reinforce it in some way, shape, or form. If I can't, then whatever is happening, your pup, your dog's not ready for it. So... Um, Maybe maybe you've you've done this. It's it's very possible that your golden retriever knows exactly what you're asking and is choosing to ignore you. If that's the case, you need a more valuable no in some way, shape, or form. But I will say, and I'll just use an example that happened to me recently. Um, had a puppy, did really really good, six seven months old, full training program, advanced work, off leash work. Well, the beginnings of off leash work, um, really really great. But it had never, it, it, he had never done all of the new stuff he had learned around his very large, boisterous family. I could take this dog to the park, have dogs barking at him, people oohing and on at how cute he was, and he'd listen to me. But I take him home, and it took a while to even get a little bit of focus from him because he has a, a very loud, boisterous family. Not a bad thing. It's just he hadn't proofed all the new things he learned in that situation. So... Let me ask you this, is a sit break or sit down, stay calm, really easy to do in the house, not for a treat, but as a regular routine that you do for 10 mm -hmm. minutes, a few times a week or a few times a month inside, in the backyard, in the front yard, are you incorporating it on every walk? Because if you're not, then you can't expect to get it, say, at the park when someone walks by with a dog. And so even though your dog may know everything you're saying, it has to be proofed in multiple situations and multiple environments. And with this particular client, they were a little bit like, aw, the dog's not listening to me. And I was like, that is because we've never done it in anything like this situation before. 15 minutes of heavy handed working with the dog on leash, lots of guidance, adding food work back in, even though we had actually gotten rid of it. That, that dog started to really click, and it's only two, three days later, and they said there hasn't been an issue. Because he's been trained on all this stuff. It's just now we're layering on something the dog hasn't dealt with before. We're asking a level of accountability with the dog, um, six, seven-month-old puppy, that they haven't had before. So, yes, you need probably need a better no, but you also need to make sure you're putting in the repetitions the muscle memory and the consistency of um, just expectations, you know, really make sure that your expectations match what you're, you're asking of the, of the dog. I'm going to break down some of that dog lingo proofing. Oh, thank in you. New environments basically means that you're working out the bugs in new places. So you do it inside the house. Perfect. Backyard, eh, work out the bugs. Front yard, eh, work out the bugs. Sidewalk in front of your house, maybe up and down a few houses back and forth, work out the bugs, build your way up to the park, and then maybe go into like a local coffee shop or something like that. 
coffee shop, by the way, really, 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 really challenging hard, for yeah. a puppy. Like a, Very challenging. Like a really specific example of, of proofing, I, I should have dove into that term. We have 30 tell, seconds. Okay, so you know. fine, fine, fine. Is telling your dog place and down, and they're really good at that. And you can walk around the home, and you can do good. But can they do it if you pull out the vacuum? Can, can they do it if you go, good boy? Do they just bolt to you because they think good boy is a release word? I mean, these are all things to proof your commands at home. There's so much you can do at home and in the yard and things like that before you expect them outside. And golden retrievers are notoriously happy, spoiled, wild. pushy, fun, wild dogs. Mm -hmm. Fun in a fun way. We love goldens. But um, yeah. Ten of them right now. They can be. They can be uh, a handful. They can be really pushy. Percent. Yeah. 100%. So okay. You brought up the vacuum. I did bring up the That's vacuum. That's a hard one. Vacuum. Sorry. TikTok says I'm your biggest fan. I love your videos. Yay! Thank you for watching our videos. Awesome. Too. Hopefully Thank you guys you. saw Bandit, our most recent one. Oh god, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Bandito Petito. He's a good one. <laughs> Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, please, for our next one, join us. It'll be next Wednesday, 1 p.m. Pacific Coast time. And then all of our questions that we have, I mean, you can do through, you can submit them ahead of time on our IG store. You can do through a DM, DM, not PM. DM. Uh, you can request questions live, just like we've had a few people do it. You can even request a live face-to-face -face like we had Marco do. I mean, we love that. We love seeing your face. We love talking to you guys personally. And anytime we have a question, please, please, please throw in breed and age because yes. if we have a six-month-old chihuahua versus six-month-old german shepherd huge you're gonna get difference. very different advice huge difference because they're very different types of dogs so yeah it helps us tremendously yeah anything else you want to add? yes that we really enjoyed seeing you marco yeah. i think i'm i think i'm face deprived because of the masks i'm like oh, was human. that a smiling mouth <laughs> <laughs> all right anyway guys thanks so much for joining thanks us, us. See you next take week. care